How's it going YouTube and welcome to a new episode of First Timers. Now today we're going to be back on some cars. This is super exciting. Actually, it's going to be more of an SUV. Um, so we're actually going to be replacing the factory speakers and a 2013, let me say that again, 2013 Tahoe, Chevy Tahoe. Now I'm not going to say what the project name is because people might get offended. And it does end in the last part of the Tahoe, so we'll just say that it's the project. And you know. <laughs> so anyway, we are gonna be changing some speakers. We're pretty excited. Um, pretty much these are some JBL component speakers. I believe these were purchased from Best Buy. So this is gonna be pretty exciting. Uh, we have another set of these guys here. These are actual adapters for the doors, uh, just because the factory speakers are fully molded in there. And then we also have a Metro kit, which I know you guys can't see here just yet, but it's a factory wiring harness to the factory speakers as well. So you don't actually have to cut your speaker. So there's a lot of videos out there where you see people cutting the wires and they're hooking them directly to the speakers and or to the actual um, little uh, component box that's in here. So we'll actually talk about that in the unboxing so I can actually kind of give you guys a quick, uh, quick rundown on everything. Uh, but first we'll start off with the speakers. All right guys, so here we have the GX608C by JBL. Uh, these are gonna be component speakers. They're gonna have a separate tweeter and a separate woofer, as well as, as I call them, like, kind of like a little sound separator. So um, pretty much it'll send the highs to your tweeters and your lows to your woofers there. Now, um, I know a lot of people always ask, why do you wanna do that? Uh, but the best reason is clarity. Uh, when you have things you know, put into one package, you're gonna have a, um, you're gonna have audio that just isn't gonna be as clear or kind of muffled uh, because the speaker, you know, like your three way speakers that you might get might be blocking some of your woofer sounds or it might be distorting the, the tweeter sounds just because of how much um, sound is being uh, pushed through the uh, speakers. Now, when you separate them here, um, you put your tweeters up high, um, it's kind of like elevating a stage. So let me uh, go back over to the uh, video here. Um, but the first thing we'll open up is, like I said, it's kind of like a little sound separator here. Um, so you're gonna have your, uh, you're gonna have your input, and then you're gonna have your two outputs, and then you have this 3 dB button right on top here. Um, so it's pretty nice that it says JBL on it. So it's just, um, it's just there. So you can just press it if you want the max dB going through your speakers. Now. Um, you're gonna to wanna to use that just because you need to actually, uh, set, like I said, you need to separate the sound. So um, you're gonna have your tweeters go to the tweeter side and then your woofers go on the woofer side. Um, but the instructions are actually very nice. I do like what they've done here. Um, very, very nicely laid out. Um, it looked like they really spent a lot of time on figuring out um, everything and anything that you might need uh, to get the speakers installed without any trouble. Now, um, on the, the next part of this package here, you're gonna notice that it looks like all the tweeter assembly is stored on the top part of this package. So that's actually very cool. So you have different mounts, obviously for different vehicles. So um, screw on mount is probably what we're gonna be using towards, uh, towards the install, but that was actually pretty cool that I could go out and probably buy these speakers and uh, put them either in the El Camino or in my 69 charger and actually mount them. Now I probably wouldn't mount them on my pillars, but um, it does give me the option if I need to. But like I said, this is actually a very, very, very clean set. Now, like I was saying, um, if you do move the tweeters up high, um, think, of, uh, think of you sitting in a stage and all your sound is coming in from your feet. Now obviously it's not gonna sound as perfect as if you're getting the audio up towards your ear level. So the idea with the tweeters is you can actually raise the audio to, towards your ear level and give you nice crisp sound. Um, the woofer will kind of resonate from the bottom and it'll kind of give you a full sound inside the car. So the idea is to try to mount these tweeters around your ear level. Um, I've seen cars where they mount them in the ceiling, that's cool, but you kind of want these around ear level uh, to get kind of the best sound for, or the best bang for the sound or for the buck, whatever you can call it. Um, but overall, very nice. Now that we get into the uh, woofer portion here, um, like I said, the build quality on these looks amazing. I am super excited about that. And I, you know, like I said, these, these look like they're gonna be just really, 
really, really cool. So right now I'm just taking my time to pull them out. Um, I just, I'm kind of excited. You know, I, I love audio. That always just kind of gives you the nice clean noise you get into a car. The car sounds good. Um, you get into, you know, you know, just idles, revs, everything. And then you just turn on the sound and you're just like, all oh, right, this is really cool. So first thing um, that, you know, I was kind of showing you there was the um, screws. So we did have the screws that came in the package. Um, we're probably not going to use most of these because we did get the whole metric kit and all that fun stuff. So we could just pretty much mount these in its factory location. Uh, they do have the seals there. Um, very easy to do. Um, now there's uh, nothing really inside the uh, packages here, um, but you can kind of see um, see how they've uh, how they've uh, kind of locked everything in. So like I said, uh, you know, nothing too um, nothing too crazy in that sense. But other than that, um, very well packaged and everything. The screws do come on the bo the bottom of the package, so don't throw them away if you're going to be uh, taking them out to look at them but you can already see this magnet already looks really clean. Look at how clean this speaker is. Um, the only other thing I could say they could do is maybe just make it light up somehow. That would really be cool. Um, but I don't know if there's a way to do that. But I, like I said, I would be actually pretty excited if they were able to do something like that. Um, but yeah, overall, feels good. Um, we're not gonna be using the screen guard, but it would be really cool to actually see these um, on the Tahoe here and you know have the jbls just kind of just like lit up but look at that that looks clean i love the look super excited um so yeah i do have to give it a thumbs up now we're gonna be using the uh wire kit here now this is gonna allow us um, to not have to cut any uh cables and um that's kind of a big thing for me because i don't really like to go too crazy and cut cables in a car but um yeah anyway literally you'll have the uh plugs there that will plug into your factory harness and then you'll have the two um the two uh pigtail ends um obviously we'll cut those uh, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of uh see where we're gonna actually be putting them obviously these are gonna go right into this um, into this box here. So this will be our input. So obviously we'll have to cut them and we'll just screw them right down right onto the section there. So you have your input, like I said, your highs and your lows. Um, so this is gonna make this job very easy. Plug and play, I like that. Um, no soldering, so just literally screw it right on there, screw it down. Now, um, when we do mount those boxes, we are going to use double-sided tape, so I know people are probably going to freak out, but um, that was kind of the easiest way um, you know, to figure out how to mount them inside the door without drilling anything and causing any issues. Now, this particular package here now is the... Um, is the speaker holders so your factory speakers in a tahoe are going to be a it, are going to kind of lift off you know and be molded into a um into a holder i've seen people cut them out and then they reuse their their originals but for me i you know to have a nice clean look and probably the best sound i would just uh, recommend getting this little holder here it's literally only one screw and the bottom slides right into the bottom of the door so it's kind of cool to be able to kind of see that before we um before we get started but like i said the plastic on here is actually really nice and i do uh, i do like it so um like i said i probably we probably won't be using the outer tabs but it'll just be the top screw there other than that, yeah, guys, I like it. This is exciting. Um, let's uh, let's get over back to me and uh, we'll get started in the video. All right, so now that we've done the unboxing, we do have a lot of, uh, a lot of items here. We're probably not gonna use a lot of the smaller parts, but like I was saying, uh, the bigger parts we're gonna be using. So uh, let's jump into the install portion and uh, get you guys all set up here. So we're gonna install everything, get you guys all set up, and hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe if you want to see more great automotive videos, um, as well as we do uh, gaming and house uh, projects as well. So anyway, let's jump into it. All right, so the next portion of the video, we're going to actually set up everything first. So we'll get all the speakers set where they need to be. We're hooking up the cables uh, to the actual boxes here. And obviously we're doing them all one at a time. Now, once we get over, uh, once we get that all set up, we're going right into the door. If you notice, I kind of put tape on things that we're going to need to remove. So first I'm starting over here, taking off the little plastic piece. Um, there's going to be a screw behind that that we're going to need to remove. I believe that's a seven millimeter. So very easy, just make sure that you try not to damage anything, but look like somebody already had these off before. 
um, right down here below there's going to be another screw here and um, we're going to need to remove this guy um, obviously a common problem on Tahoe's is the door handles tend to go bad so um, you can kind of see the screws that there's actually two right in the back there um, now we're going to be removing the uh, first screw here and that's like I said right on the door handle pull very easy to remove you just literally screw it unscrew it out and then you have the other two at the bottom here and remove uh, remove those two. So there's one and two there. So very simple, easy to remove. Um, so far the job is probably gonna be pretty easy so far. Now guys, I just wanted you to hear the noise so you don't you don't think uh, you're breaking things. Uh, like I said, overall, as you're pulling on it, you're gonna hear all this noise. It's, you know, so just don't freak out. But it's very easy to uh, pull everything out. Just make sure you pull it, you know, with some uh, strength. You're gonna want to start off with the clamps on the bottom. Those will be those will be your harder areas. Here, you'll have a cable that attaches right into here. So what we did was we held a little tension on the outside door handle and lifted the uh, and lifted the metal cable that was going inside there out first, and then we were able to push down on each end of the um, of the connector that's here. And I'll get a close up for you guys here, so you can see how that comes out there because that just needs to just push, and then it removes itself from that hole there. Very easy. And then the plug that you put your taking out there's only three and you can see that there's multiple slots here so just remember to take note of what your vehicle is uh, we know what our vehicle is so it shouldn't be too bad um, I don't think they can all interchange but just in case just remember how you took it out all right so the next portion is removing the speaker like I was saying uh, previously it's only one screw that's on top that really holds it in um, you might need to use a uh, little pry tool uh, just to get it off of the um, off of the door, you know, it's just it's been on there for a while So especially if you have uh, this age of a truck, it's like I said, it's been on there um, Now the clip is a little harder to remove. It does take a little bit of uh, a Little bit of magic so you probably have to use like a little screwdriver to, to kind of push the tab um, But once you got it, you'll be set and ready to go. So um, like I said, this part wasn't too hard just yet just make sure that you try not to break anything as you're going through everything. Uh, seven millimeter, next at the bottom, and just some plug. All right, so now that we got the, uh, you know, pretty much uh, that speaker out, uh, we're gonna start putting together our speakers with a little plastic uh, holder or the little holder that we can't take off of the original speaker. So all we're going to be doing is uh, screwing it together. Um, we did use one of the actual um, little foam uh, inserts just to go between the speaker and the plastic piece. So if the speaker is, is bumping a little bit, it'll, um, it, you know, we don't have to worry about it. And also it kind of like, it glues it together, you know, because they're double-sided tape. Uh, so it'll give you a better seal as well. So we're very excited. Um, to get these in and uh, get to test it here. Seven So one thing that I'm not going to be showing you is how we routed the wire for the tweeter. Um, it's not too hard to do, but we did run it, run the um, the new wire through the original wire loom that goes between the door and the body. Um, other than that, once you get it there, you can just go right up through the dash and connect it. 
Um, just make sure that you connect the correct, uh, the correct wire to each part of that box. Now we did use Gorilla Tape to actually just literally Gorilla Tape it right into that section. So uh, two pieces, 30 pound hold, um, I'm figuring it's not going to come out. Now if you do have something that's going to have uh, you know, like really heavy subs and all that good stuff in there, obviously I'd figure out how to mount it, but other than that, this is you know, everything's pretty much in its factory location right now and you should be good. Um, again, just um, just so you guys know, when you're running the wire up to the um, up to the uh, pillar post, just make sure that you uh, have enough wire. Um, also, try to zip tie the wires um, down to other wires or to other areas just so they don't rattle as you're either driving or as you're playing music. That would just be one of the things that you just don't want to have to deal with while you're, um, you know, after you just got, you got everything installed and you're just like, oh man, now I got this rattle and you got to pull everything back out. So just, like I said, be, be very good. Um, this pillow post was having a little bit of trouble just because uh, it looked like when he had his windshield replaced, uh, they broke one of the tabs, so we had to deal with that. Now we're just bolting everything back in and just make sure you line up all the bottom parts of the, um, of the actual door panel before you try to screw anything in. So you just want to mount the bottom first, you know, well, do the top to kind of hook it in, but you want to mount the bottom and push it all together and then you can go back up to the top and mount it. You know, from there. All right, so as we get started on the rear door here, uh, again, I'm using the arrows to kind of show you where the um, little plastic covers have to come off to expose the bolts. And I'm gonna do the other one here and it's right underneath the door handle here. Again, like I said, guys, those door handles are prone to breaking. The rears are usually better than the fronts, um, but just be careful as you're pulling those out so you don't break anything again. Um, and that piece has to come straight out so you don't wanna break them if you're trying to take it up through the top. Now, um, one thing I didn't talk about was the actual manual locks. Those are very, those are very easy to take off the little plastic piece. Um, just take your time when you remove that first little square clip that's in the center to pull them off. But you want to make sure that those are both um, that they all get removed first. And that was something I forgot to talk about. Um, but other than that, very simple, easy to take out. Um, once you uh, get the screws off, um, we'll get to the uh, portion where we need to actually use. Um, Use the pry bar here, plastic pry bar, and lift up on the door so you can actually start to pull it. And it's very easy. Just make sure that you're pulling um, on the actual, where the studs are, where the uh, plastic inserts go to actually hold the door panel on. Other than that, it will go right on very easily. Now, um, again, like I said, don't worry. Um, you know, my screw fell in, so if anything falls in, you can always pull it back out when, when you're getting there. Now, um, I did have uh, Junior taking this part off. Um, he ended up breaking the, uh, the little tab there, so we're gonna actually have to fix that. So it's a little bit of a pain, but I'll actually talk about how to fix that, and we'll just remove this here now. All right, guys. So we had our first little broken piece, and pretty much we're just getting towards the end there, and a little tab that you can see here broke off which is definitely a needed tab, a needed spot there. Um, so right now you see that I'm wearing gloves and I'm gonna be using a, a product today to fix this, it's called Plastix. Um, pretty much it works on any hard plastics. So originally designed for motorcycle uh, fairings. Um, this one I've had probably well over 10 years. Um, usually their kits will come with like a molding bar material This you put in water and you can mold other sections and you can actually rebuild this but since we have the, the broken piece we're just going to add a little bit of the plastic uh, material here with the um, liquid and there's a little dropper kit and we'll just drop the liquid on there and it'll start to fuse it together. This stuff is very potent. The smell, I, you know, I don't know if Junior can smell it but the smell is pretty uh, gnarly that we have here. Um, it almost looks like water, it is not water. I do keep it in the fridge so it doesn't evaporate. Um, but if you have children, have like a lock fridge or a garage or something that you can keep this in because this is, this is some gnarly stuff. But we'll be using it and I'll be showing you guys today how to uh, use this stuff. And if you ever have it, like I said, I've had it for a long time. Um, it is something that I would definitely uh, recommend to have in your garage for broken tabs. 
As we get started here, I just kind of want to show a picture of the kit there. It comes with the powder, liquid, a dropper kit, as well as like a little two cups to kind of put the material in with the molding bar material. Um, right now, I'm not going to be using the molding bar material. I'm just going to be using a piece of tape. And since we still have the other piece of the um, broken uh, tab there, we're going to just be putting those uh, two pieces together here. Uh, so like I said, this is actually an amazing product. Um, you can use it on different uh, different cars and different applications. Um, I do have people that, you know, obviously they, I'm not going to say rebuild full grills, but say they have broken grills and stuff like that. You kind of just dremel a little section out, use a piece of tape or the molding bar material if it's corners and stuff like that, and just start to uh, uh, mold it to that section. Just take a copy of the opposite side and boom, you are set and ready to go. But uh, right now I put a little bit of powder in the cup here, so I'm just going to be putting a little powder on the crack. And right now, like I said, I'm using the tape to kind of hold both pieces together, um, just because it is kind of a difficult spot here. Now I put the liquid inside the um, inside the dropper kit here. So if you notice, as I'm slowly dropping it on there, um, it's starting to change color. Um, the idea is you don't want it super runny where it's just running down everywhere. You just want it to be. You just want it to kind of look like. Um, I don't want to say putty, but you kind of want it to have that consistency where it's not it's not super wet and runny, but it's not super solid or powdery still where it didn't absorb any enough of the liquid. Um, keep in mind this, uh, this product does take about an hour to dry. Um, right now it is a colder day, so we're going to actually let it dry overnight uh, just because Junior doesn't have an hour to wait. So when you see us put this door panel back on, it'll probably be either right before um, it starts to get dark or you know I might be wearing something different you know a different sweater or something like that but other than that it goes on very uh, simple easy um, just keep using the applicator to drop it on I'll see if I can get in a different position so you guys can actually uh, actually see what I'm doing a little better but like I said all I'm doing is just literally dropping a drop here and there on each of the powdered areas uh, to kind of make sure that it's actually bonding now once it is dry, I will um, I will remove the tape and then add some more uh, material on the opposite side as well too. But um, like I said, uh, let's continue um, working on this piece. So right now, where we stood it up this time, so we want we want to make sure that the powder is getting into different areas. Um, I am going to add a little bit of powder around the circle. Now this material, once it's solid, it will be drillable, tappable, um, pretty much whatever you'd want. So we're probably gonna have to drill the, you know, some of the material out of the area here once um, once it's fully cured. Um, so like I said, we're just letting it. Um, we're trying to take our time to to make sure that it's gonna hold and do its thing. Like I said, right now it's it's a little tough just because it is a curved area, um, and it's still, you know, obviously it's on the door panel, so trying to do everything here is a little bit of a pain. Now, um, you know, we're gonna let that dry and all that good stuff. Like I said, it'll be going on another day, or, you know, but same video, obviously. But um, we're just gonna run the wires, uh, just so we can actually get the wire up to the top here. And we're gonna go through the hole where the other electrical wire is. We're also gonna zip tie that wire to um, the electrical there as well. Now I know a lot of people are going to be like, where, where are we going to mount the tweeter? The tweeter is actually going to be uh, drilled into the door panel um, just because the way that this kit comes, it's going to look good anyway. So we're not too worried about that, but we just wanted to make sure that um, you guys know that we're just kind of getting everything set up. Um, and like I said, if it looks like we change clothes or whatever, you guys aren't freaking out and going, wait, this is another day. But like I said, since we broke that tab, it did have to, you know, we did have to make sure that um, it cured enough, you know, so it'll stay solid, you know, because we don't want to have to go and try to buy a new door panel to get that fixed. Amazing product. It's not JB Weld, you know, this is actually plastic. So it's a form of plastic. It'll bond plastic together. Um, yeah, the speakers, very similar setup as well to the front. So all I'm doing is connecting the two connectors. I already double-sided taped the box in there again with the Gorilla Tape 30-pound hold. Um, I have it right between, right above the actual hinge up high, just so it'll actually hold in there. And other than that, it's a pretty straightforward install. It's just like I said, take your time so you don't break anything and don't make our mistake and 
break a tab because that does you know obviously slow down a project as we're getting there and I know people you know you don't want to have to spend an extra couple hundred bucks on on trying to fix it if you're if you don't go this route on using plastics I know some people just go I'll just get a door panel and call it a day but you know if we have to order a door panel it could take like a week to get here and you know he needs his he needs his uh, Tahoe running and looking good now we're just mounting in the last screw here so this is um, this last screw for this particular area is very easy to run in just run it down um, now keep in mind also uh, the boxes with that little button make sure those that that button um, is consistent across all four boxes or two boxes just so you have the same noise coming out of each one now here's the tweeter now the tweeter I'm showing you how we're gonna use it we're gonna be mounting it with the little little thumb wheel uh, style uh, style nut um, which will just screw right on to the hole that we're gonna drill we did buy a little hole kit um, hole saw kit from uh, from Harbor Freight and so we literally just made our first little hole and uh, make sure you measure and all that good stuff cut once you don't want to sit there and make a hole and then you can't fix that hole because that's a you know it's going to be a pretty big hole for the tweeter um, but just make sure you have it kind of where you want it and it looks really good so right now once uh once your hole's in you know just kind of clear off any loose plastic that's right there and then uh, get your tweeter ready to put on so right now we're just going to slide the tweeter into its home and then we'll tighten it down here with the actual uh, thumb thumb wheel nut and once we get that in there we'll actually have it uh, fully tightened down and looking good so um, this is you know like I said drilling holes and stuff and you know making sure it looks good is you know half the battle so make sure that you find a good location and like I said for having the best audio you want them around ear level obviously on the back door we didn't have we didn't have too many areas to put it and if we wanted to put it on the pillar right there it'd probably you know blow out the poor person's eardrum if they're in the passenger or driver's seat you know when they're turning up the radio so you, you kind of you know obviously think of where you're going to be putting it you know if you have a two-door car sports car four-door car all that good stuff but other than that it screws right in um it's gonna look good we like the we like the look of it it looks really good on the door so when you see it right now guys um just keep in mind it's just amazing and you can definitely move the uh you can move the speaker up or down um it has a little uh has a little movement in there so if you want to aim it in a particular direction and bounce the sound off of certain things you can uh so that's actually very cool um but yeah let's uh see if we can get this door panel back on too and let you guys take a look at it because like i said uh we're actually let you guys hear it i know you guys probably won't be able to hear the same quality that we're going to hear obviously it's going to be going through my gopro mic um but like i said i hope you guys can kind of hear the difference it definitely is one of those things that you can hear a difference from the factory um from the factory sound now like i said when i was using the plastics I did add a little more plastic in certain areas, so we did have to use a step down drill bit to actually clear it out just a little bit. And then uh, once we got it cleared out, we were able to put the plastic, uh, the little lever, um, uh, what's it called, the little lever uh, cable back into its home. And yeah, and we pretty much got everything connected and we'll show you how it sounds. This is exciting, guys. All right, guys. So we finally finished. We're inside the car here. So I finally finished. We got some no copyright music going. The other music, obviously, uh, that we played earlier, we couldn't use in the beginning of the video to let you guys hear the old speakers. But here you go. So you guys can hear it. One hour, no copyright. Yeah.